Ramble. Thanks so much to Core Seltzer, Warby Parker, and Peacock for sponsoring today's episode. All right. Good morning, everybody. Good morning. Good morning. Today we have Maggie and Hello. Rachel. <laughs> Becky is out this morning. Mm. She has something very important to do. Mm-hmm. Otherwise, she would be here with us. Um, mm. I know. I know. <laughs> Let's leave a space for her. Yeah. I mean, around this time of year, it's, you know, we're getting into the fall. Uh, I'm getting bigger. You know, there's there's we're getting be, bigger. There's gonna be some there, <laughs> we're storing up for be winter. Some podcasts. Yeah, it's, it's gonna be tough. I'm starting to think about maternity leave and know. all those crazy things. Yeah, I know. I think we're gonna have to get Matt on this pod before too yes. long. Yes, I mean, dare I, you say that the internet will go wild? I <laughs> know. I know the internet will go wild the second we mention that Matt is coming Matthew. because he's coming. He's such a he's such a well kept secret. Yeah. yeah. Truly. Winter is coming. <laughs> Winter. Matt will be here. Winter is coming Sometime. and Matt will be here. Today, we have quite a few things to talk about. Uh, so today we're going to catch up on medical myths with Maggie. Just more like medical facts, but we <gasps> still got a wor- that. working title, working title. Code Maggie. Code Maggie. Code Mag. Maggie. Yes. Yes. Okay. I like that. I like that a lot. And then we're going to answer a couple of uh, a couple of questions that, um, you know, people wrote in. Or maybe we're going to start with that. Yeah, let's yeah. start with it. You want to start with that? Yeah. Okay. Let me pull up those questions. Okay. You guys ready? Yeah. We're ready. Okay. Okay. So question number one, I thought this was perfect for us because the title was Brides and Babies. Oh. Mm -hmm. Uh, So we've got Amy. Congrats to all. I'm so happy for you ladies. And my friend group is in a similar quarantine boat. I got engaged right before quarantine. So no wedding for a while. And tonight, my best friend who has had trouble conceiving found out she is pregnant. Oh, Ah, congrats to you both. No, congratulations. That's huge. Just big life changes. Um, How do I feel comfortable shopping for a wedding dress? It's such an important decision. Hmm. And I don't know where to start. Do you think a maroon or black dress is less formal? Oh, uh, oh. What should I do to help my friend while she's pregnant? What is the best present or face-to-face help you had while pregnant? Thanks for the help, Amy. Oh, Amy. I love that question. I know. Well, we have brides. I know. And we have babies. I feel like this is advice for me as well. Yeah. yeah. So the first part of the question was the safety of trying on wedding dresses. Was yeah. It? Kind of, I, I mean, I think we could open this up to just, you know, What's it like being engaged right now? Yeah. What what's what are you dealing with? I mean, I feel like it's different depending on what sort of wedding you want. Mm-hmm. Uh, Zach and I are kind of still in the honeymoon phase of being engaged and haven't really like sat down to talk about what it is we want. He did like set like a calendar invite for me and him and he's like stop to sit down and talk about what we want in a wedding just to make sure we're both stop. on the same page it's on your calendar is it, is it like a lunch meeting or like, a, like a dinner it was supposed to be over the weekend but obviously we didn't get to it because always things are coming up but but he, it was just, on the calendar maggie i, I thought that the calendar. Stick to the calendar. i know that's why we put it on the calendar i know uh, i'm so bad i feel like it's just gonna come down to like a year's gonna pass and i'm gonna be like oh my god i still haven't thought about it but I get to thinking. I don't know. It just seems... There's no rush. There is no rush. You're but right. also, you probably think about it every day, right? Yeah. Or, I don't know. I don't know. There's like some days where I'm like, Zach, let's just go to Big Sur. Let's get married in the Redwoods up in Santa Cruz. Like, it'll be great. And then there's other parts of me where I'm like, I want both of my families to like mm-hmm. come together and be excited and be able to meet each other. Because like, that's the only like ceremony that you do totally mm-hmm. get with that many people mm-hmm. and so may like i just waiting. say what you can do both you can do both you could do both you if you want it parties as you want i know yeah. celebrate yourself i just want everyone to be comfortable so right. i don't want to impose on anyone so we're still brainstorming and thinking of what we're gonna do well so my advice is well i guess this wasn't part of the actual question but but give take the your advice time. anyway okay. do what you want there's mm-hmm. no pressure to do anything that you're not comfortable with and take as long as you need because times aren't pressing right now. If you want to have a, if you want to elope next weekend, go for it. Mm-hmm. If you want to wait, wait. It's almost like time doesn't exist right now. No. Yeah. Yeah. There, it, it, time is, is like a black hole from mm-hmm. February to 
who knows when. Yeah. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so, so but everyone keeps time. telling me they're like, well, if you want to have it in 2022, you better start thinking about it because those are going to book up too. And I'm like, ah, what do I do? Oh, there'll always be an option. Yeah. Have it in like a backyard or something. I, I would mean, be so happy to have it in a backyard. <laughs> yeah, seriously. Yeah. Well, okay. So what was the best wedding you've ever been to? Like what was sort of, what, what was sort of that dream wedding that you imagined being you know you're you're like oh this would this would be so nice this is this is so lovely this is the moment which ariel and i both wish you had been at our weddings oh yes yeah i would have loved that if i could like travel back in time and just be a fly on the wall <laughs> yes. like soaring through your wedding yes oh i'd be God. so happy um no but you guys are obviously gonna both be at my wedding but yes i know i can't wait <laughs> unless you decide to go elope and then that's up to it you and case. i'll hear every detail you do you i don't I don't know. Or Do only time will tell. <laughs> yes, that's true. What was your wedding like, Rach? My wedding was in Ojai. <gasps> that's right. I've seen <gasps> so pictures. So beautiful. And it was so nice. It was on a farm that doesn't do weddings, um, but they just said yes to us for no reason at all. Because you're fantastic. How did you find out about said farm? And like, um, how did you think to ask? I found them on VRBO and wrote to them and they said, yeah, come on by. And they had just, the woman who owns the property had just bought it like three weeks before. Oh, wow. And we came by on New Year's Day and she was like, yeah. And we signed a contract like a week later, gave her a deposit. And then she was like, don't tell anyone you're getting married here. Um, tell everyone she literally was like, tell people who ask that you are my niece and that's why I let you have a wedding here. I don't want to have weddings. Oh, gotcha. So it had nothing to do with my wedding because it had not happened yet. But she just didn't want to, she didn't want to be a part of the wedding industry. Yeah. But we had already signed a contract and given her money. So we still had it there. Wow. That's fantastic. So you can't have weddings there, but we did. It was like a giant avocado farm and oh. citrus farm anyways and we had it outside and we diy'd a lot of stuff we like handmade all kinds of stuff these neon canvas strips that were like 12 feet tall that we dyed in our kitchen that and then hung so up cool. as our backdrop i'll show you photos you were um, so cute i love the diy that we made a moon out of like wood like a like a eight foot tall moon with a little bench on it and we hung all these sparkly things behind it and our dp friends lit it with lights and like gaffer friends brought lights and they set it up and that was like a little place where you could take photos like a That's photo booth cute. my parent my grandparents sat on one at their prom in the like late 1940s and we based it on that <gasps> that's Stop. Really so I have photos cute. of them and then photos of us oh yeah it was cute it was very sweet but we also this is why i say both all the time we eloped first we ran off to the santa barbara courthouse like five months prior and just got married just us and clementine Oh, and Clementine. Mm, Clementine. So you, Zach, and Bowie could go get married, and you could have a wedding, and you could go to Big Sur. You can do whatever your little heart desires. That's so cute. I've always like joked to Zach that Bowie's going to be at our wedding, but he recognizes faces and it like absorbs people's emotions so quick that oh. he would legit shit himself if he tried to walk down I the aisle. Highly and saw, recommend like, over. 50 people he knew he yeah. would just be so beside himself there would be he so totally would. many like mo so zach was like we'll just name like a cocktail after him and that will be his presence at <laughs> that's, that's, so right. Right. That's, yeah. right. that's so smart that's perfect yeah <laughs> i was like i want you can, at our way you don't he's too wild clementine who's not wild at all totally took on the emotions of the weekend and Aww. acted like a bad dog from day the whole weekend she was just out of control yeah and she wasn't in the There's, wedding he's so sensitive to energy yeah yeah, yeah no i don't recommend that bowie's there no oh, i want I, him there i know listen he was, like, so cute like a little bow tie or something yeah you won't have or, like a, a flower arrangement him. around his neck oh flower crown. He eats. flower crown no our wedding was um uh I, i'm not gonna say the opposite it was just it was it was very heavily planned yeah um it was at a museum and in Chicago? In Chicago. It was at the Chicago History Museum. That's and very epic and cool. It and was very daily. epic and cool. And it was like, uh, we invited 125 people. Um, and, you know, everything, it was, you know, we had the caterer and all that kind of stuff. It was it was big. I think the only thing that we DIY'd, even though I'm like a huge DIY person and I had like all these Pinterest boards of yeah. all the things that I wanted to DIY, there was no time. 
Yeah. There was just no time. And there you guys, was so... Oh, no, your engagement was like two years, right? It, it, yeah. it was two years. You would think in two years we would have time. Um, but no, it, it just got up to like the last few few weeks and, yeah. and there was just so many, so much to do. Um, and uh, and so the only thing that we DIY'd is we tied little bows around the programs and I sourced these enormous uh, like taffy candies mm-hmm. that were like the size of a hot dog and put <laughs> and, and had those put on every uh, every table or you know like every plate and of of course like the the booze was a big thing for us we had like the most open bar that you could possibly have we actually had two bars wow um and there was champagne at the ceremony <laughs> so yes. as you walk into the ceremony oh, yes. you, you get champagne oh my gosh <laughs> prickly pear margaritas at the ceremony right I, I wow feel like, i feel like that's Fancy. one way that we handmade i we Did also had muddle? watermelon lemonade and i was like pureeing watermelon the day of our wedding i want wow. to be at rachel's wedding that's i feel so great this wedding. Wedding. it would have been so cute we will be at maggie's <laughs> also we'll be at maggie's. your wedding because we can't do anything right now yeah. it's going to be the wedding of the century like i want to start outfit planning for myself and the girls now do it i know now. do it i, I totally do okay so so are you thinking about like like what are some of the things that you can do in quarantine mm. can you dress shop in quarantine because i think amy was asking like how do i dress shop yeah right? can you order I things feel i haven't actually done this much research into dress shopping yet but i assume that dress like places are open with limited capacity yeah and i don't see a problem trying on dresses but it would mm-hmm. probably have to be like whoever is closest to you right your your mom and your it sister won't be, be there, like yeah. your entire if you well, plan yeah. to have a bridal party it won't no. be like yeah. everyone there especially yeah. with traveling i feel like a lot of people have friends from out of state totally. well since we're in your quarantine pod yeah. if you need anyone to come <laughs> i know Volunteer as tribute. We could bring the baby. Oh, we my could bring gosh. the booze. <laughs> Let a party. June Poppy and uh, Wes decide my dress. Oh, oh my, my God, goodness. So cute. They um, would run amok in yeah. a wedding dress store. They would have the time of their lives. I don't yeah. know if the store associates would like it. No, no. I'm sure the store associates would not like it, actually. Uh, but I'm just imagining wes and uh june chasing each other around and then poppy just touching all the fabric yeah. oh my god <laughs> she just, she just gently to stroke things oh man how do we feel about other colored wedding dresses oh yeah oh. yeah well yours was not mine was not white yeah mm-hmm. and i never really looked for white dresses it just didn't feel like my vibe yeah i think it should be on what you feel most beautiful in Right? I think so too. Because if you feel comfortable and you feel beautiful, that will radiate off of you. 100%. Absolutely. Yeah. And I think white does make a lot of people feel bridal. Yeah. And like epic, like wedding. I, it just, I actually tried on a black one. It was like a vintage one from the 50s. It was very cool. Was but, it a, like like a black wedding dress? Or was yeah, it, it was uh-huh. a black wedding dress, um, but it had boning and lace and was very uncomfortable. Mm. Um, but mine was like kind of a like very neutral blush color. Mm-hmm. Ooh. Mm-hmm. Yeah. With, yeah. With like floofs. With floofs, with Lots so many ruffles. little layers of floofs. You had like a very traditional white dress. I had a very traditional. It it was it it was ivory because okay. I don't think anybody actually looks good in that like bright, bright, bright white. You yeah. know, mm-hmm. like the sort of um, almost iridescent white. Yeah. You know, I feel like there's a lot of of uh, of dresses out there that are that color, and maybe I mean, actually, I shouldn't say nobody looks good in that because there definitely are people yeah. who look good in that. Um, but I, I do not look good in that color. It's just sort of, um, I don't know. I like it. It, it almost uh, reflects like, like the, like the snow, you know. And so I had sort of like an ivory dress. But I did the typical dress shopping where I went to the bridal store, and I think I went a couple times. But I did some research online first, and when I went, I went. I actually went by myself. I went really? by myself too. I went by myself because. I didn't want the pressure of me, picking something ha- of, of of like having all these people and looking at me entertaining people yeah. yeah and like it's it's such a it's such a like a personal thing 
where when you're looking at wedding dresses and trying to figure out because I had absolutely no idea what would look good on me. I'd never worn a formal mm-hmm. dress like that before or had so many choices for what a formal dress looked like. Would yeah. could would could look like. You know, like do I look at in mermaid dresses? Do I look at in ball gowns? Do I look at in this or that? You know, like I I maybe worn a couple prom dresses in my life, but they were always just like the the one you know you're like oh okay yeah i'll wear that one yeah um but this is like i want it to be perfect and so i had to go by myself just just because i also didn't want you know i didn't want people commenting and looking at my my body and 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 you know being like you know i didn't want my mom to to be like oh that one looks beautiful but i don't think it looks beautiful and then having to explain to someone I like know. i actually don't like it mm-hmm. you know and it, it would just turn into a lot this of pressure yeah, yeah. turn into this huge emotional thing and so the first time i just went by myself yeah and i tried on probably 15 dresses just to wow. see what i liked you yeah. know and talk to a neutral party i i like you know basically made friends with this with with <laughs> like the the salesperson there and she's like you know she's she's helping me like clip things and all this sort of stuff and i'm like what do you think do you think mm-hmm. that this is like sexy or is this trashy you know like <laughs> Warby Parker is committed to providing exceptional vision care online and in stores, offering eyeglasses, sunglasses, eye exams, and contact lenses. Glasses start at $95, including prescription lenses. Sunglasses, progressives, and blue light lenses are also available. Need help choosing frames? Take the quiz. Answer a few questions. They'll suggest some great-looking glasses that are totally personalized to fit your face and style. The Warby Parker aesthetic is vintage-inspired with a contemporary twist. Every pair is a custom fit with anti-reflective, polycarbonate, and prescription lenses. Warby Parker now offers contact lenses, including their very own daily contact lens. Scalp! by Warby Parker. Scout is a comfortable, breathable, and affordably daily contact lens. A 90-day pack is only $55. I ordered the home try-on kit and I was able to be a different person every single day. I tried the Eugene and it was super easy and I got to take my time and decide what frame was right for me. Try Warby Parker's free home try-on program. Order five pairs of glasses to try at home for free for five days at warbyparker.com slash sit with us. There's no obligation to buy. Ships free and includes a prepaid return shipping label. Try five pairs of glasses at home for free at warbyparker.com slash sit with us and, and she's and like in a see-through dress yeah yeah <laughs> exactly exactly i'm like like too much too much cleavage too or, much or, or like just i don't know what do you what, what do you think so the, the one that i ended up choosing was like a plunging neckline uh, <laughs> <laughs> the saleswoman's like just right just the right amount of cleavage <laughs> um yeah and and then i i so so i sort of narrowed it down to what i kind of knew that i wanted um and then i invited people to come with me that's smart and because um, at least you know what style it is because i when i go shopping for clothes i don't think i i'm the type of person that goes alone i don't really same bring people with me because I am the most indecisive person and it's too stressful you need hearing time my to think. like yeah I, I need time to think yeah and I think I could bring like a close maybe my sister or my mom or my a, sister or a close, really close friend but my sister 100% is the exception to the rule yeah I could bring my sister but I'm trying to think of like how some people bring like their 10 closest friends with them i was like how do you make a decision i feel like everyone it's such a personal choice well, and, yeah and on say yes to the dress oh yeah you know how, that show yes. that's so dramatic people the mom's crying she's like i want the one with the bow oh. and the girl's like i don't look good in that and it's like <laughs> there's so much drama yeah it's just a dress yeah, yeah. true yeah so i i guess i didn't realize that this was gonna be my recommendation but i do recommend going by yourself first just to, to know out. what you like. Very COVID yeah. friendly. Very COVID friendly. Yeah. Yeah. And then, and then once you've sort of decided, oh, okay, I actually want like a slip dress that, uh, you know, has a little bit of uh, like an A-line on the bottom, um, then yeah. you know what to look for. And and you know that the dresses that you try on and that your mom's going to get attached to yeah. are going to be All I know is I don't like. want to be in one that looks like I'm eating Zach. You know what I mean? <laughs> like a cupcake? <laughs> like a cupcake one. Because <laughs> yeah. that's already like a tiny man. So I don't want to like you, seem like I'm like engulfing so him small. in my dress. I, I do just, love how you, that's like a consideration. <laughs> <laughs> He's so teeny. The He's, dress can't be huge. It can't be humongous. Yeah. I thought the same thing with my heels because Ned and I are are like a half inch mm. apart in, in height. Mm-hmm. Um, 
And so I didn't want to be towering over him, Mm -hmm. you know, because I thought to myself, okay, well, like platforms would be more comfortable than Mm -hmm. say just regular heels, Mm -hmm. but a platform is going to add like three, four inches and that's going to be too much because we're, you know. Yeah, I, I think love I do doing for fancy comfort. shoes. I wore you'd be dancing a lot at weddings. Yeah. I wore dance yeah. rehearsal ballet slippers that I bought from a dance company for sixteen dollars. That's I what I wore. They were cute. so comfy; no one yeah. could see them. Yeah, yeah. I mean, would, no gonna see if you're wearing like a full length dress. dress, it doesn't mm-hmm. matter. Be comfortable. Are you excited to go dress shopping? I am. I don't know when. Is it on the agenda yeah. ever? Not yet. Not yet. No rush. I think you do need to know time of year and venue before you can pick a dress. Yeah, oh, and then I don't know, like, I don't know what our plans are yet. Yeah, so right off to, to Big Sur, that's different from then, like, having exactly. a wedding on right. the beach, which is different from whatever. Yeah. Big Sur, I can see, I can see Maggie wearing, like, a very elegant, um, like, onesie. <laughs> you know, like a sort onesie. of sort of wide wide leg, but plunging neckline, uh, oh. sleeveless. Oh, that's wow. that's how that's, that's maybe what I we imagine. should do a podcast where we each get to pick a dress for Maggie to wear. Oh yeah, yeah. I'll take a note of it and then I'll go uh, try snap it some selfies. Uh huh. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But yeah, I see like you know in the middle of the redwoods. Uh-huh. I feel like you know Maggie's got sort of the elegant pantsuit type of I love situation. pantsuits. I know I you do, and you look suit. good in them. I girl. love pantsuits; um, they're so comfortable. But then you know, if it's going to be sort of the traditional, I like your family is Peruvian. Mm-hmm. Are, is there like a is your mom, does, does your mom want you to get married in a church? Um, she doesn't put that pressure on me. I mean, That's good. like I did what grow a up mom. in a in a Catholic household, but yeah, it's whatever. That's good. Whatever we want. Yeah, yeah. That's wonderful. Because, I mean, if it was like a church wedding. That's very then, different. You know, those traditional dresses are mm-hmm. very appropriate for church mm-hmm. weddings. Yeah. You know, you've got these huge, uh, like, white towering flower arrangements. And you have to wear the the dress with, like, at least a little train. You know, <laughs> when you're when you're walking down the aisle of a Catholic church. You need a train. You need a you train. Need a train. Right? <laughs> We've all seen Sound of Music. Yes. <laughs> yes, we have. <laughs> well, and her best friend's pregnant. Yes. Oh, yeah. So, so what, what are things, uh, Ariel, that's helped you feel supported uh, that's a during your question. time in quarantine? What can your friends do? I try to remember what I needed in the first one. Mm-hmm. And I remember, you know, the... The baby shower was so special, you guys. Aww. It really, really was. And we're not doing one this time. Um, not just because of COVID. I mean, COVID definitely, like, we would have a party in a heartbeat mm-hmm. uh, oh, if, no. if 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 it wasn't quarantine. But um, we also don't need a damn thing. Right. <laughs> we need absolutely right. nothing. Yeah. You got um, a lot of hand-me-down, especially. Yeah, yeah. From but, Wes. But I'm like, you know, just celebrating the the fact that this is all happening mm-hmm, right. i feel like was a really big deal for mm-hmm. me because you know you're going through a huge life thing and i feel like it's similar with like an engagement like you guys would have had an engagement party mm-hmm. you would have had a big old blowout mm-hmm. you know where we could all celebrate and we could all just be like you know finally we love you so much like it's happening <laughs> hugging cheersing yeah. yeah yeah and so with those not happening, I think still recognizing that there are these huge, huge life changes that are going on, because that's that's one thing that in quarantine, I feel like we all sort of just get caught up in what we're doing in our lives. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. You know, like, oh, I've got to take care of the kids. I've got to, you know, do this Zoom call at work. I have to clean the house, make sure everything, you know, it's like you just sort of get into your routine and you get into um, just, you know whatever is happening that day mm-hmm. and and you sort of lose track of the milestone moments yeah you know mm-hmm. and and if you don't have a a party that's been planned or uh, you know something like that then then maybe those things will go uncelebrated i hope yeah. not no i feel like you're still like reflecting on just the whole big i mean this is the only thing i know i've only will get engaged once right. hopefully yeah <laughs> <laughs> <Not gone. laughs> well, i will only get engaged once but like it doesn't i don't think it uh, uh, it takes away value from oh no. or like being pregnant in quarantine i don't think just because you can't have a party doesn't mean that it's not any more special than if it were out right. of quarantine yeah, yeah. 
So are you guys going to have like a Zoom party or, <laughs> or something like that? I feel like Zach and I will, we have no problem in making up for lost time once it's safe. You know? <laughs> like, yes, absolutely. Was, like it's, it's not going to. So you're going to have a wedding week at some point. Yeah, it's going to be a month long. Seven <laughs> days of parties. <laughs> it's just the engagement month. party. <laughs> the bachelorette party. Uh-huh. Oh my gosh. If I could do like Camp Saggy, that would be so cool. <gasps> what is Camp Saggy? Like if we just like rent out mm-hmm. like a summer camp. My oh friends my did gosh. that on the East Coast. Really? And they combine their names like that too. Camp, camp Kaluk. Kelsey cute. and Luke. And, get and married. we went. There was a lake. <gasps> I would love that. We swam. We played. We slept in bunk beds. Canoeing. That mm-hmm. sounds amazing. Right? That sounds like, yeah, so fun. It's it's yeah. so fun. You should do it. I miss summer camp, so. Camp Zaggy. Camp Zaggy. I love that. Yeah. I've never heard you combine your names like that. Zaggy. Really? Zaggy. Yeah. It's, I've always heard. Uh, match? Match? No, no. I have not heard match No one either. says match. It's always your last names. It's always. Oh, uh, Cornstamante. Cornstamante. <laughs> That's too hard. That doesn't roll off the tongue like Zaggy. Zaggy. I yeah. know. Zaggy's good. Uh, Steffi, who's Zach's sister, sent us a blanket that had Zaggy embroidered onto it after <laughs> shortly after we got Stop. engaged. It's so cute. So it's sitting cute. in our living room. I oh love it so gosh. much. Camp Bowie. Camp Bowie. That's cute. That's cute. Oh Dogs yeah. invited. I would love it. We can make camp t-shirts. Oh my gosh. It's a souvenir from the weekend. Yes. The week, the month. We could have like tree barks where everyone signs it. Yes. <laughs> oh man. <laughs> S'mores. Oh yes. Yeah. Do you guys know that store? Of course you know this store. A summer camp in Ohio. Yes, of course. Yeah. No. No. Well, oh, you'd love it. Wait, is it a store? Yes, yeah. I've been there. Yeah. Yes, yeah. It's, it's a store. That it's teeny little store that used to be a gas station that yes. they turned into a cute store. Yeah. Yeah. Super I feel like cute. we should do, just make everything cute like that. Yeah. Yeah. <gasps> Bandanas embroidered. Cute. Yep. Oh my gosh. Love it. We're there. We're, we're ready. We're ready to plan. 2024. Here we come. Yeah. yeah. Rachel will, pr- will produce your wedding for you. Yes, um, please. <laughs> she I also does weddings. <laughs> I know. I did run a budget and have like a calendar for my wedding that I've shared with like five or six people who've gotten engaged and wanted to get married in Ohio. I was like, here are my vendors. Here's my budget. Here's Sounds my stuff. Great. Feel I, free to copy. I, mean, I feel like production isn't that different from wedding planning. No, it's just a live event instead of a planned out video, but same, right. same. What is our next question? Yeah, what oh, should we yeah. do now? Okay, so I also found a question that I thought would be perfect for us because uh, you both, uh, I think, are on the same page as me with interior design stuff. Yes. We, In that much, we love your interior design. How much do we love talking design? about interior yeah. design? Yes. I love Ariel's Ooh. style. Oh, you guys are so sweet. I love your style. <laughs> that's, <laughs> that's sort of where I was going with that. We are just trying to make our houses look more like your house yeah. at every oh, turn. Stop. You know what? So uh, Michelle, our nanny, mm-hmm. ha- has been, uh, so the girls and Wes are hanging out. They're also a pod. Because they're, they're friends. Oh, they're, they're friends. Because, you know, kids, like, you know, it, Wes has three friends right now. And the other day, I don't think, I don't know if I've told you guys this or if I've told the pod this. Uh, the other day he sat down, um, and sort of looked at me. We were like eating a popsicle or something. And he goes, "Want to see friends?" Oh, and I said, "Me too, bud. Yeah, we can. We'll we'll go see our friends soon. Yeah, you know." And so he has Poppy, June, and Quinn, yeah. who's his his friend from like infancy. Um, and so Michelle was saying that uh, your style is just like ours, but more colorful. <laughs> it's far it's, more colorful. It's slightly out of the blue gold mm-hmm, accent mm-hmm. neutral tones and a little more colorful, but yeah. it is similar. You guys have like red and orange. We and Rachel is super into citrus. Oh <laughs> yeah. True. What a weird thing. I, I think it's fantastic. I mean your dog's name is Clementine. That's true. You got married on a citrus farm. That's true. Um <laughs> we have a thing going. I think and we a like theme oranges. Here. Like orange tones, pinks. I think there's a but theme. you guys also live in like this gorgeous, like very limited color scheme, very like soothing. Your living room is just so filled with light and all yeah. these like neutral tones. I feel like it's Lots a, of it's, neutral tone. I've introduced some Moroccan pillows because I want. I was missing love. some color. I like that. that. Yeah, it's sort of like a California modern. Yeah, feel. yeah. You know, because it's it's sort of that beachy like mm-hmm. um, uh, 
those lighter tones. Yeah. Or I like was a, a Moroccan wedding blanket I could see, mm-hmm. you know, with mm-hmm. like the textures and like all in the same like scheme. I was yeah. I have forever been afraid of having a light colored couch. I understand right. why. Yes. How do you guys do? Um the couch fabric that we got is like kid and dog proof, so it's like pretty easy to get stains out, but I would I don't think I could ever have a white couch. Right. right. Unless mm-hmm. like the cushions were machine washable. Mm-hmm. But even which, who wants to many wash of them are. Who wants yeah. to wash them all the time? You know, Coors Seltzer isn't your average seltzer. Rooted in Coors' long history of sustainability, they were inspired by a generation that wants to do good in the world with a mission to restore America's rivers. Coors Seltzer is launching the world's easiest volunteer program. Whatever you're doing by simply cracking open a can of Coors Seltzer, you're volunteering. Dang, that's cool. Our waterways are at risk. 80% of America's rivers are drying up. Through a partnership with Change the Course, Coors Seltzer is helping to protect and restore America's rivers. Each 12-pack of Coors Seltzer restores 500 gallons of fresh water to the U.S. rivers and communities that depend on them. Enjoy naturally flavored black cherry, mango, lemon, lime, and grapefruit. The specs are in. Coors Seltzer is 4.5% ABV and only 90 calories. I like cracking open a can of bubbly after a long day on the balcony and just looking at the trees. My favorite flavor in particular is mango. And as I'm enjoying this can of bubbly, I'm supporting rivers. Join the world's easiest volunteer program by simply drinking Coors Seltzer. You can volunteer to restore America's rivers. You buy Coors Seltzer, you help restore 500 gallons of water into America's rivers. It's that simple. Visit CoorsSeltzer.com to find Coors Seltzer near you. That's CoorsSeltzer.com. For every 12-pack sold through August 31st, 2021, Coors will purchase services from Change the Course to restore 500 gallons of fresh river water. Details at CoorsSelter.com. Celebrate responsibly. Coors Brewing Company, Fort Worth, Texas. All right. We have Sierra. Hello, everyone. I am a 21-year-old woman who graduated college this year with a medical coding specialist degree. That sounds very intense. Very dope. Uh, I finally got certified and got a job in my degree. Congrats. That's huge, Uh, especially in a a pandemic. Yes. Um, After starting to, uh, after everything's starting to fall into place. um, My question is, what are the essentials for a new apartment owner? We've all been through this. Uh, I currently live with my parents so I can save up money and pay off my car and student loans. I don't really have house stuff besides candles and some things my parents will pass down. Isn't that how it all happens? Mm -hmm. (laughs) Um, If you could answer, that would be amazing. Love you guys and thank you so much. Sierra, like Sierra Mist. Um, I think my big one, my big two items that I think if I could have nothing in my apartment I would definitely need a trash can because when we first moved into a new place, we didn't have any sort of anything and we Mm -hmm. had nowhere to, we just had like cardboard boxes like filled with our things. And then my second one to make cooking a lot easier would be a good set of knives. It doesn't have to be Mm -hmm. like a whole block, but just like two or three knives that you really like because it actually makes cooking a lot faster if you have good knives. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. A chef's knife and a paring knife. Yeah. I feel like the big ones. Just uh, well, or for... You know, for people who are going into like a, a store and they're like, I don't know what I'm looking for. Yeah. A big knife and a little knife. Yeah. <laughs> don't be using butter knives to cut your vegetables because not only are you more likely to cut yourself that way, but it's just it, it takes so much longer. Yeah. 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 And you can you can really get the apartment like the essentials for an apartment. Mm-hmm. So let's talk. Let's talk. You need something to sleep on. Yeah. Oh, yeah. You need a mattress. You, need a mattress. you don't need a bed frame. You do not need a bed frame. But you can buy one on amazon for like 50 dollars sure. ikea i yeah. mean ikea is great but, for our first apartment stuff oh yeah i think when i moved to la and had nothing even though it was not my first apartment i just went to ikea and got the things i needed yeah. and they actually they have surprisingly cute stuff yeah like people people IKEA. knock ikea for you know being like cheap and and everybody can tell if it's an ikea thing and if you get you yeah. know the the ikea chair then yes, yes. people are going to know it's Ikea. But there are other things at Ikea that are, you know, functional and cute and also very inexpensive. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, I still use my first apartment's uh, bed. What is it called? Like a bed frame. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. It's just like three pieces that snap together. Zach and I still use it and we just got 
a nice headboard to make it look like it's a nice bed. It's not a nice bed. That's it's like a two hundred dollar. <laughs> that's a great way to do it. <laughs> yeah, because headboards you can DIY a headboard too. But first apartment, no headboard. No needed. headboard. No Just headboard. Throw pillows against the yeah. wall. Yeah, mm-hmm. I didn't have a headboard when I first moved into my own apartment, but we have moved multiple times since that, and I've heard horror stories of people trying to move their bed frames Mm -hmm. into a new place and like have had to take like jackhammers and like split (gasps) them in half yeah so get something versatile and easy to move totally Mm -hmm. because it hopefully you get to stay for a couple years but in the occasion that you have to move in a year yeah try not to accumulate too many things that are hard to move right Mm -hmm. if you can get a mattress from your parents that's big because mattresses are a big purchase yes Mm -hmm. um and you don't need to bring the box spring because those are impossible to transport. You can get a box spring on Amazon um, that you just sort of build. It's they're like um, uh, these metal box springs, and they they come in a box. You know, so it's it's not this huge honking full size. Do you have thing. a box spring? Yes. Do you? Yes. I do not. You don't have a box spring? No. You you, you have like a bed that doesn't need a box spring. I hope so. I've, I think I'm sure I just like the height from the box. I spring. like the height too. Yeah. But so, so what I'm thinking with the box spring is you don't need a bed frame if you have a box spring because then you get mm. the height off mm. the floor. Mm-hmm. But you could also put a mattress on a bed frame. You know, as long as it has slats. Yeah, then, that's what then, we do. Then your mattress is supported and okay. you should be fine. Yeah, but you don't need a headboard. But you could DIY it. You could mm-hmm. also like yeah. paint the wall in in like you know. A, you paint a headboard on the wall yes, and then it looks like you have beautiful. a headboard or something like that totally. but you don't have to buy the furniture um i've seen people use like cotton or curtain rods and then like hang pillows cute. on them yes, as a bed or as so a headboard cute Super that's cute. really cute yeah if i you're love crafty. that yeah yeah what um, are the other must-haves you have to have some knives have a some trash knives. can a bed mm-hmm. i think you need lamps that i i know that that's getting into like maybe uh, you know, maybe don't need territory, but I am a huge lamp person. And I I think we never turn on the overheads at our house. Mm-hmm. I think that lamps just make everything more cozy. Cozy. Lamps and rugs. Yeah. See, yeah. Like those are those are two things that somebody moving into their first apartment is not going to spend the money to buy. But I think that making a house feel like a home, those are some of the most important things that you need is mm-hmm. a lamp and a rug. Because it's just going to make the space feel like you live there mm-hmm. and not like you're squatting, you know? Yeah. What about dishes? Oh, that's... Do you need a whole set of no. dishes? Zach and I only have like four plates for the reason that I don't like the uh, sink to start overflowing with dishes. Uh-huh. So I give ourselves... I think we may have like six. We have like four nice ones and then two like extras. But I hate seeing mountain of dishes, so... That gives me like... How do you have a dinner party? I know. But what if you have people over for dinner? A lot of people don't like coming to ours because we live in an apartment. So we go to all your houses. (laughs) And we only have four plates. So why would anybody come over? No. We've had dinner at your house before. And we have like a tiny dining room table. We don't have like a a, a formal dining space. Mm -hmm. So like when we do have people over, it's us either cooking family style or like potluck style. And then... Yeah. Or we all get takeout and sit on the couch that makes sense yeah i mean i i would say it it really depends on your entertaining style but if you're like living on your own right i don't think you need 12 plates no (laughs) college graduates are not expecting you to have plates yeah plates for them four plates four mugs four cups you know you don't need a full bar Mm -hmm. you don't need any of that kind of stuff what alcohol do you need when you move into your first apartment that's a great (laughs) question uh I've never really thought about it that way. Probably a case of Trulies and a case a bottle of, of Trulies. <laughs> yeah, you're gonna need some uh, some White Claw. Uh, uh-huh. Uh-huh. You know, I would say okay if you're like a fancy person who wants to have a nice bar, I would get a nice bottle of tequila, mm-hmm. a nice bottle of gin, mm-hmm. and. Those are, those are the ones that I drink, so I don't yeah, know what else to get. I mean, what do 21 year olds drink? They're probably drinking vodka. Vodka. Put yeah. vodka in the freezer. Doesn't yeah. have to be that nice. No, no, it does not have to be nice vodka. Nobody's going to care if it's not good vodka. Yeah. You can make yourself cocktails that aren't like you can muddle some strawberries, right. some vodka, yeah. some liqueur. And muddle. Yummy. Liqueur. You do not need Yummy. a muddler to muddle. You can muddle with a um, a wooden spoon. Yeah. Yeah. Mm-hmm. 
Uh, but you do need cups to drink out of. Yep, do not do. go drinking your wine out of a mug. That is, <laughs> oh, I, no. I get it. I get it. It's your first apartment. Get yourself some glasses. Drink water out of glasses, I mean, not mugs. I used to do that. I did too. <laughs> I know. <laughs> it tastes but just this fine. Is, yeah. Come on, ladies. We, we're going for like, you're going to have four plates. <laughs> you're going to have four sets of silverware and a set of silverware is three pieces we're talking fork knife spoon <laughs> we're not just when, living uh, with forks here <laughs> when i lived in portland i was nomadic and i lived with the location manager of portlandia for a while and she was like a grown-up woman who had a trick and every after evening we would walk her dog and she would pour wine into mugs so no one would know we were drinking wine and we would drink wine on our evening walks and we would pop by the local bar and they would refill our wine mugs Stop. So through funny. the walk like a like a like a like a little um like just a little like top a koozie. Off, of yeah you, but you have to drink the first glass because it's not going to match right so you've got to get that down before you pass by the bar I Hop in with that. the dog, say hi. They'd top us off. We'd walk the rest of the way home. I do that with my reusables at the movie theater. Zach and I would uh, like split. He'd put his little weed soda. <laughs> I get my little bottle or like my little cup of rosé and we walk uh-huh. into the movie theaters like, as if we have like tea or something. Yeah, <laughs> I do the same thing at the movie theater. Well, actually, Zach would bring tea in most of the time. And I feel so <laughs> naughty doing it. But like, and there have definitely been times. Well, these are mo- these are movie theaters that allow alcohol. They have a bar. So it's yeah. not like you can't we're just completely bring to any. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, I've you definitely can't. done that. Yeah. <laughs> Before they served alcohol at the movie theater, I would literally bring a mason jar full of wine. A mason jar? That's yeah. a lot. And they would like, well, you, you know, have movies a long time. Movies? <laughs> three hours sometimes. Could be a three hour movie. Oh, true. And I'm, I'm usually sharing with Ned. We'll like pass our mason jar back and forth. Oh my God. I know. I know. Arrest me. I, I just, I like having wine when I'm watching a movie. I know. Right? I'm, I'm just saying there's a time for wine and mugs yes when yeah. you're in public <laughs> another thing that i have done is uh when ned used to play ned used to be on uh a like a championship soccer team once we like when we moved to la he mm-hmm. would play soccer every sunday morning and we would invite people over to like watch his soccer games and i would bring you know mimosas or something like Team that mom <laughs> and we would we would drink them out of uh, uh reusable coffee cups Ooh. You know, so we'd be mm. drinking our, our champagne our coffee. out of our reusable coffee cups. And we're just like drinking our coffee. <laughs> no big deal. <laughs> no big deal. <laughs> what else do you need, Mags, for a first apartment? Do you um, need a sofa? A futon would be nice because not only does it serve as an extra bed for a friend, but it could also serve as a sofa. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And I'd say don't go too expensive on, if, if you are Ooh, getting a sofa futon. because this one is not going to, la- this is not your forever sofa. Yeah. And it's probably going to move around a few times, like, you know, get get the under $500 sofa. All right, moving on. Um, Maggie. Let's get into our <laughs> medical, medical Margaret. Medical Code Margaret. Maggie. Is still the working name. Paging Maggie. Dun, dun, dun. Paging Dr. No. Paging, <laughs> Paging Dr. Dr. Margaret. Dr. Maggie. <laughs> um, so Code Maggie. Let me know in the comments what you guys think we should call this segment. But I really like medical facts and talking about things that are common misconceptions. I can't imagine things actually why. true. Why you're interested in medical facts. <laughs> I don't know why. Yeah. I just like, <laughs> like discussing that. Them, but something I found out a couple years ago, but I forget to have brought up on the podcast is, did you guys know as mothers, you probably already know, but I'm sure a lot of people in the audience don't know this fact. Go on. That when your baby infant is sick, the one, the female body is so amazing that it produces more antibodies or like it gives the baby what it needs when it is sick. So it has more protein, it has more fat. The women, oh. the female body is incredible. I have heard it that. You have heard that? Did you guys all know that? No, I don't think I know that. Yeah. So if you, uh, there was a study done and it says that something in the baby's saliva signals the mother to produce something that has more nutrition in it. Like in breast milk. In breast milk. So if you could, oh. if you were to compare your breast milk um on any normal day and when your baby is starting to come down with like a cold or a flu it's a lot more 
viscous and like mm-hmm. yellow because mm-hmm. it has more protein, fat, and antibodies. Wow. How mm-hmm. cool is that? That's very cool. I was like, the wow, female, we are female. incredible. The female body is amazing. Yeah. I mean, it my body's is. never done that, but wow. But yeah. the fact that it is capable it has the possibility of doing that, my goodness. I know. I like um, and then the second thing, I uh, was reading that the new Apple Watch came out recently. And it's basically the same, like all the specifications on it is exactly the same with the exception of it now has a pulse oximeter, which is basically it measures the amount of oxygen in your blood. That's like the main update. Oh. Oh. Yeah. So basically in the hospital, I mean, we have like a sensor. It's like a dedicated sensor that measures the amount of oxygenated blood that's circulating through you at a given time. It uses like light and based on light absorption, it's able to measure how much is in your blood at the same time, which I think it's, I don't know if it's coincidental that we're in the middle of the pandemic and this update has come out, but uh, I wanted to talk about it because I feel like there is like the someone thinks that they need to have like a pulse oximeter in their house to be able to detect if they have COVID-19. Interesting. Interesting. I think that this tool will be helpful. Like, let's say if you were to take a nap and you may have sleep apnea and you have no idea, this tool could be uh, beneficial in figuring that out and like identifying that. But in regards to diagnosing whether or not you have COVID-19, I don't think, uh, right. It, it's like a common, I mean, It can measure if you have lower, like if I were to, if someone were to tell me, hey, Maggie, I, I did this on my dad and I noticed that his uh, oxygen saturation was like in the 80s. Normally in a healthy person, it should be in the mid to high 90s. Okay. If it's any lower, I would recommend that you speak to your doctor, but they use it in the hospital as a last resort. If you are starting to have shortness of breath and like respiratory distress, it's one of the last things that will come, huh? that will show. Like That's, you will start to show like increased work of breathing. You may have like darker extremities or bluer lips before your oxygen saturation follows. And so what- It's a late- What causes your oxygen saturation levels to go down? Like why would, why would you want to know that? Like what would be like the, the underlying factor? I mean, if you have like chronic- lung issues it mm-hmm. could help like let's say you're ambulating and you have an apple watch and you know that you have chronic lung disease it could measure and you'd be like oh maybe i should sit down for a second and like let my body i love how you use the word <laughs> ambulating i oh know gosh, yeah. it's so like I instead know. of like hey maybe you're walking around <laughs> this is what you guys have to stop me and be like wait what is that what is that <laughs> yeah what's ambulating <laughs> ambulating means walking around walking around <laughs> yeah <laughs> I so know. I'm running er- errands and I'm ambulating. Yeah. <laughs> mm-hmm. But there should be no reason. And I think that sometimes, like I think of, I'm sure you guys have heard of Owlet. Have yes. You guys yes. heard of that? Yes, of that course. That causes a lot of anxiety. stress and anxiety. anxiety. Yeah. Are you worried that the, the Apple Watch is going to do the same thing? Yeah, I think it's oh, a great, it's a tool. Interesting. But we have to, I know the Owlet is basically for people who are listening that don't know what this is. It's a sock kind of Mm -hmm. um, device that you can put on a newborn to monitor their heart rate and monitor their blood oxygen saturation. And I've heard a lot of mothers that I've met have like that have them. It creates a lot of anxiety. It does give like information if your child is high risk for having sudden infant death syndrome. But uh, it... Is just a tool and you have to remember that like the Apple watches aren't calibrated the same way that medical devices are. Right. Mm -hmm. Nor is the outlet. Nor Nor is is the the outlet. outlet. Yeah. And it has been you it has been um notifications all the time. Yeah. So without a lot of like let's say like it gets kicked off like in the middle mm-hmm. of the night at 3 a.m. or something like that. And but you're going to get up an alarm a on your phone and you're going to be like, my baby is dying. Yes. yes. And you go in and they've just kicked it off. Yes. Yeah. It, uh, so I, just remember if those of you who do buy your oxygen saturation, don't get anxious. Just know it's a tool. And right. yeah. Interesting. Interesting. I've, I've always been a, this sort of person that, 
Oh, it's hard to admit it, but like I would prefer not to know, you know, rather than worry all the time. I think mm. it's just like based on like what is going on with you and your family. Like right. if you have a child with medical conditions, like right. I could understand why someone would want to use that. Right. It's but, basically like having um, hospital monitor, like monitoring. Yeah. But maybe slightly but it's less. Not it's, it's not hospital. It's not. It's right. not. It's not as good. It's a tool. Yeah. And it's a tool that you don't know how to use. Right. Yeah. And I, the I, same is true of, um, I know a lot of people got at home Dopplers to listen to their baby's heartbeat. I have heard about those. But yeah. because they don't know how to use, use them, it, yeah. they can't find it and they freak out mm -hmm. that their baby has oh my gosh. died and they go in and then they can find the heartbeat, but they're yeah. not. A, One of my the friends, Dopplers aren't very good, and B, they aren't capable of like doing them correctly. Yeah. One of my friends is actually a pediatrician, and she works at an urgent care in South L.A. She's had many people come into the ER because the outlet said that something <gasps> yeah. was wrong. Yeah. Stop. So, like I mean, baby's yeah. not acting strangely, totally fine. Mm -hmm. Yeah. But they're like... Their Her nervous oxygen about saturation is in the 40s. Yeah. It's like, okay. Yeah. <laughs> I know that Apple Watch is, I mean, the amount of sudden infant, infant death syndrome has gone down because they have like all these uh, suggestions for good sleep hygiene with baby, like mm -hmm. on their back, mm -hmm. no toys in there and mm -hmm. all these things. So, yeah, it's just important to not get too anxious and worked up. I don't know. Yeah. I don't know what I'm... I am. Yeah, what the I takeaway am. Is, I mean, I, I was just thought, the parent of a kid who was in the NICU because she couldn't maintain her oxygen levels and yeah. preemies who were born very mm -hmm. small. Yeah. I would never get the outlet. Yeah. <laughs> Similarly, because, Wes was yeah. in the NICU because he couldn't maintain his oxygen yep. levels. Yeah. Yep. Was the same thing. Yeah. And, you know, I think. Or if your kid has like seizures and stuff and you're yeah, worried right. that they're going to have a seizure in the middle of the night and you're not going to know. Yeah. Like mm -hmm. I would say just sleep in the same room if you can. Yeah, I think sleeping in the same room is the number one recommendation. And yeah. making sure your infant newborn is getting up like every two hours to eat and be held like yeah. they're supposed to in the beginning. Yeah. Yeah. I have thought about getting an Apple Watch. You are an avid wearer of the Apple Watch. I am. I like the timers. Yeah. Oh, genius. I'm a big timer person. Yeah. Like, what do you, so you set timers for yourself? Yeah. I set timers for myself both at home, but like a lot of the time at work too. Like mm -hmm. I just don't want like pumps to beep. Like it's like my, I used to work night shift. So I was always like, don't let the pumps beep. I don't want to wake anybody up. So I'd like make a set a timer and make sure that I'd like sneak oh. into the room and adjust the pump before it could be like beep at like three o'clock in the morning. Cause the worst thing is like baby newborn just falling Waking asleep up. Uh -huh. and the parents are like, there's something beeping in here. Yeah. Yeah. Ugh. So. You're such a good nurse. You're so good. Do you know how many times I've been in the hospital? Pump just beeping for like 10 I mean, sometimes minutes. Sometimes you have like, like calling and calling. That? Sometimes you have no control. Like sometimes there's pump malfunctions and I like hate when that happens, especially on night shift. And you're like, I'm sorry. I like really try to make sure that pumps don't beep. But sometimes Ugh. like you're juggling between four people, three people. Totally. Like, it happens. Oh, man. But we try when we can. You're so good. Uh, but yeah. So I am thinking about getting an Apple Watch uh, just for like... To monitor your pulse yeah, oxygenation. Yeah, you monitor my oxygen levels. <laughs> no, I think that you would use it well. Like, I know that... You before you were pregnant, you like to work out at CrossFit. It's yeah. like really cool at like That's monitoring your workouts. That's kind of why I want it. Yeah. yeah. It's just to like sort of monitor... Uh, and I find myself, I find myself in quarantine losing track of time. Yeah, <laughs> and like, yeah. So I've had to start time boxing myself to get things done. And I like that it monitors your steps. Yes, I've been doing like the ten thousand step challenge with my mom, and I need to do that. I need to do that more do you often. Get I need it to walk more every day. I do. I get it when I'm at work. It's so easy to get mm. at work. But yeah. on my off days, like especially on the weekends, there will be some days where it's like you should get up, and I'm like. Leave me alone. <laughs> and I kind of need that. I kind of need something to just tell me, like, get your butt out of your chair uh -huh. and stop looking at your computer. I like the deep breath ones, too. It's like, you should do they have you a deep, deep breath deep breathing one. one. Yeah, oh, my gosh. Fun. Yeah. But I was thinking, should I get, like, the older version or the newer version? And I don't think it matters because I think, like, the only main update on the new sixth generation one is the, the oxygen, oxygen thing. Oximeter, yeah. Fascinating. Which, I mean, it's the same thing with a thermometer. 
Like mm-hmm. a thermometer is only a tool. It can't diagnose you with COVID-19. Like it is a a good tool to have. Uh-huh. But especially when I had COVID-19, I would have been able to get through the doors of anywhere because I was a febrile. Right. So it's just a tool and it has limitations. Yeah. Mm-hmm. All right. Fair enough. Yeah. Good to know. If you want to save money, maybe get the fifth gen. Yeah. It does all the same things. Yeah. Love it. Can't recommend it. It is a watch. It tells time. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> As if that's why anyone gets I know, it. It I tells know. time. It tells time. Well, that was Code Maggie. Uh, comment down below what you think I should call this segment and <laughs> comment down below other things you want me to talk about. You're really about. not sold on Code Maggie. I don't know if I... I'm not not in love with it. <laughs> <laughs> but I think I can do better. <laughs> <laughs> we'll see. I think it's adorable. Maybe I'll keep it. Maybe I'll keep it. But let me know in the comments below other things you want me to talk about. If you have a fun medical fact that you think the audience would enjoy, please comment down below or email us at you can sit with us pod at gmail.com. I'm sure I could come up with some medical myths that yeah. I yeah. that I need to know about. I definitely I am a an avid Googler of yeah. medical <laughs> things. When yeah. I really should just be texting Maggie. I don't Let's know everything. Honest. I mean they're yeah. Maggie texted me about some like financial stuff the other day. Oh my and gosh. I, and I went off. Yeah. She got welcome. I got into it. Meaning, like, you had such a wealth of information to share? Mm, yeah, I'd like to think that. <laughs> she, oh. did. she did. I <laughs> want this advice. Put me on that chain. You want me on that chain? Yes. It, was about, it was about life insurance. I, I don't like, know do if I anybody wants to know life? about that. <laughs> I pass that off to my husband. Yeah, yeah that's fair. Yeah. That's fair. I do want to know more about Watts. I was uh, going to ask you at one point, how you guys met? Oh. We'll have to save that for another We'll one. have to save it. we got to yeah. save it. Okay. Me. Always saving. We're always running out of time. That's a on good this story, podcast. though. But we'll save it. We're we'll always talk running about out of time. time. I know. Because yeah. there's just so many things to talk about. There um, is. And there is so much more to talk about. So, you know, write us. Write us in at you can sit with us pod at gmail.com. Yes, please. Uh, well, we'll see you guys next time. I think Becky will be back. Yay, Becky. Becky will be back. Yep. Uh, so look forward to that. And um, yeah, have, have a good day. Bye.